Welcome to Bidwell Mansion State Historic Park. My name is Noel Lopez, and today we will be discussing John Nanny's lasting legacy for all of us here in California. During our time together, please do not feel obligated to maintain eye contact with me. Feel free to explore throughout each of the rooms in which we will be in. And let us begin. Welcome to the Grand Hall of the Bidwell Mansion. Pictured directly to my right, is a life-size portrait of John Bidwell that was composed in 1903, three years after he had passed away. His wife Annie, pictured directly to John's right and placed where she would have stood in relation to John Heightwise, missed her husband so much after he had passed that she wanted to feel his presence here in the mansion. So she commissioned a family friend's daughter by the name of Allison Marie Redding to come up with this portrait. And for the price tag of $115, I believe she did a really great job. Now you'll notice in the back corner to the right of the rear door or entryway there is a portrait of Susan B. Anthony. Annie Bidwell and Susan B. Anthony were close friends both heavily involved in the woman suffrage move movement. Directly to my left is a barometer that was gifted John Bidwell at the May Day picnic in 1881. Originally, this would have been utilized to tell whether or not there was a chance of precipitation for the day, what the dryness for the day would have been, and overall, whether or not you would have experienced a fair and pleasant day. You will notice black and white photos placed on a stand and framed directly to your right in front of the mirror. These are historic photos that were taken just after John had passed away. Annie was hosting a women's suffrage meeting and she had commissioned the gardener to decorate the interior of the mansion with floral decorations. He had accomplished this by laying a mesh screen and wire over the furniture and along the walls and threading flowers into the individual slits. Allegedly, this had taken him roughly three days to accomplish. Directly to my right is a chair that was originally owned by Daniel B. Webster. This was gifted to John Bidwell, and originally, if you would have visited the Bidwells, this would have been on display, on a table, off limits for an individual to sit on. John was quite proud of this chair. Welcome to John Bidwell's office. Directly in front of me is John's original map desk with a copy of a map of Rancho del Arroyo Chico. This was the Mexican land grant that John Bidwell purchased in 1849 and 1851, John acquires 22,214 acres and 47 hundredths of another for just over $11,000. Directly to my left is a slate fireplace with Bidwell mammoth almonds placed on the mantle. This was a strain of almond developed by John Bidwell when compared to Almonds of today, they are much larger in size and are considered a specialty crop. Directly above the fireplace is a portrait of John's two-story adobe. This was his residence prior to the construction of the Bidwell Mansion. Originally, this was located directly in front of the mansion on what is now the front lawn area. The adobe was strategically placed to the side of what was originally referred to as the Shasta Marysville Stagecoach. Individuals traveling north to the Oregon Territory or coming back into California, they may have passed John's residence and in doing so, he may have offered these individuals a plot of land as well as a guaranteed job if they were willing to relocate and establish on Rancho the Arroyo Chico. Now this marketing plan was so successful that by 1860, John founded the city of Chico. And welcome to the parlor. Directly behind me, you will notice replica 45 star flags draped over the entryway. Now while today this may be considered inappropriate during the Bidwell's lifetime, this was quite the show of patriotism. In this black and white image directly to my right, you will notice 45 star flags draped over the doorway, as well as a few other similarities. This is a historic photo taken during the lifetime of Annie Bidwell, and we relied quite heavily on these images when restoring the mansion. Directly to my left, you will notice two gas fixtures above the fireplace. Upon completion of the mansion in 1868, this home 
was equipped with modern conveniences such as gas fixtures for lighting. They relied on coal gas. To the right of the fireplace, you will notice a few original furnishings. You may be wondering why they are so low to the ground. During the Bidwell's lifetime, the average height of a human being was a few inches less than today's standards. To the right of the furnishings, you will see a square grand piano constructed out of Brazilian rosewood. This was purchased during the time of the Bidwell's wedding, and originally it would have taken up to six months to arrive in California from New York. And here we have the Bidwell's library. Through extensive research, we know that this was both John and Annie's favorite room in the mansion. And today, it is home to a large number of original artifacts. The bookcases themselves and a large majority of the literature within the bookcases are believed to be Bidwell original items. A few topics of literature that you may encounter include women's suffrage, prohibition, agriculture, and natural resources. Unique to this library, is a four-part series on the history of women's suffrage signed and autographed by Susan B. Anthony to Annie Bidwell. The two were very close friends and Susan was a guest here in the mansion on numerous occasions. Directly to my right on the fireplace mantle are portraits of individuals believed to be nieces and nephews of the Bidwells. Directly above the fireplace is a large portrait believed to be Joseph Kennedy, Annie's father. Directly to my left is a Chinese good luck tapestry which was gifted to John from the Chinese on his payroll. The reflective buttons that you see are meant to scare away and ward off evil spirits and bad luck. Because that stuff is inherently ugly, it would see its own reflection and scare itself away. Welcome to the third floor of the Bidwell Mansion. When this structure was originally being constructed, this room was intended to be a ballroom dance floor. John then married Annie, whose religion at the time frowned upon dancing. This room is then utilized by Annie Bidwell as a classroom teaching Native American reading, writing, and sewing classes. If you look directly above you, you will notice a cupola which, during the Bidwell's lifetime, functioned very similarly to a house fan. All of the hot air was directed up and out of the cupola via very tall ceilings on the first and second floor, as well as a series of ornate windows which were utilized in drawing a cross breeze throughout the mansion. And here we are atop the widow's walk of the Bidwell Mansion. Standing five stories tall, this originally offered John a complete 360 degree field of view over all 22,000 acres of his land holdings. Originally, John Bidwell writes in his diary that he could come up here and keep tabs on his boat landing seven miles to the west on the Sacramento River. Next, we will head on down and check out the Bidwell's bedrooms. And here we are in the Bidwell's master bedroom. To your right, you will notice a Victorian era mattress as well as bed frame. Now, a few things you may notice right off the bat are a very lumpy mattress. In this period, each of the mattresses were stuffed with horses hair and hay. Some may call it the Tempur-Pedic of the day. You'll also notice very elaborate headboards. Back in the Victorian era, it was believed to be beneficial for one's health to sleep in a sitting upright position. Items unique to the Bidwells include Annie's silk gloves directly to my right, her silk fan, and a portrait of Annie modeling the silk fan. Over my left shoulder, you will see a portrait of Annie in her blue wedding gown, originally drawn in 1868. Now, back in this period, it was believed to be much more practical for one who was spending that much money on a gown to get something they could reutilize throughout their life. And here we have the VIP presidential suite. This is the room where individuals such as Susan B. Anthony, John Muir, and President Rutherford B. Hayes, pictured directly to my left, all stayed when they visited the Bidwells. Items unique to this room that are Bidwell original include the leopard print coal burning fireplace to my right and the chrysanthemum vase directly to the right of the fireplace. Originally, that was gifted to Annie's mother from the first Chinese ambassador to the United States. Annie's mother then gifted it to Annie on her wedding day. And if you would have visited the Bidwells during John's lifetime, 
that would have greeted you almost immediately upon entering the front door. That sent quite the statement to individuals coming to John to protest his Chinese employees. And that concludes our tour of the Bidwell Mansion State Historic Park. Join us again here in Chico, California, and have a great day.